Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories you are tracking for you. India's foreign minister kicks off a whirlwind diplomatic meetings in US ahead of UN session. Activists in Germany and Geneva raise grim human rights situation in Balochistan. And senior Taliban figure released by US in exchange for American engineer. And now for all the details, India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar began a hectic diplomatic week with several bilateral and multilateral meetings on Monday in the U.S., where he will attend the U.N. General Assembly session on September 24th. He has over 50 official engagements scheduled in New York and Washington during his 11-day stay. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar, who is in the U.S. to attend the 77th session of the U.N. General Assembly, began a hectic diplomatic week with several bilateral and multilateral meetings on Monday. J. Shankar kicked off his visit with talks with the India CELAC, Community of Latin American and Caribbean States Quartet, during which they took stock of development towards post-COVID economic recovery and agreed to work closely in sectors including trade and commerce, agriculture, food and energy security, and logistics. As part of over 50 official engagements during his 11-day visit, Jay Shankar held a trilateral ministerial meeting of India, UAE, France, and also met his counterparts from countries including Malta, Albania, Serbia, Egypt, and Ethiopia to boost bilateral cooperation. During talks with his Indonesian counterpart, he discussed commitment to make the Indonesian G20 presidency successful, while he discussed rice supplies and development projects with Cuba's foreign minister and said he looks forward to working together in the G77 and other multilateral formats. The Indian foreign minister also met president of the 77th UNGA session, Kasaba Korosi, at UN headquarters and assured him of India's fullest support as they discuss the criticality of sustainable development goals. Jay Shankar will speak from the UNGA platform on September 24. Some of India's main priorities during the session will be fair access to vaccines, counter-terrorism, peacekeeping, reformed multilateralism and climate action. And in news from Pakistan, cattle farmers in villages of Pakistan's Sindh province have said that they are facing shortage of fodder due to devastating floods and are struggling to keep their remaining livestock alive. Floods have submerged huge swaths of Pakistan and damaged crops that were used as feed for cattle. Cattle farmers in villages of Sindh province in Pakistan said on Monday that they are facing shortage of fodder due to floods and are struggling to keep their remaining livestock alive. The catastrophic floods have submerged huge swathes of Pakistan and damaged crops that were used as feed for their cattle. Officials estimate that about 700,000 cattle have been lost in the flood nationwide and the rest, which form a critical asset in a poor country, were growing thin for a lack of food. The situation could worsen as weather officials have warned of more rain in the next few days. Barish or Salab ki wajah se, humari fasle takribun behe gayi hain, kharaab ho gayi hain, jis ki wajah se humare janwaron ke chara na mil raha hai, aur is ki wajah humare janwar mar bhi chuke hain. Hame pareshani hone uthani pad rahi hai, gas chare ke liye, jo takribun 30-40 rupee kilo milta tha, ab wo 100-150-120 rupee kilo ke hisab se hame mil raha hai. Government officials were trying to help farmers facing a fodder shortage in the last couple of weeks in Sindh province. However, a military official said airdropping supplies from army and navy helicopters would be difficult. Record monsoon rains and glacial melt triggered the flooding that has affected nearly 33 million people and killed over 1,500 in the South Asian nation of 220 million. Sweeping away homes, crops, bridges, roads and livestock and causing an estimated 30 billion US dollars of damage. 
Moving on, Baloch activist held a day-long conference in Berlin recently to highlight the issue of the human rights violations by Pakistan in Balochistan province. They emphasized that Baloch people under illegal Pakistani occupation are facing issues like enforced disappearances and fake encounters as part of Islamabad's kill and dump policy. Baloch human rights activists held a day-long conference in Berlin this past weekend to raise the issue of grave human rights violations by Pakistan in Balochistan province. Sindhi, Pashtun, Uyghur and rights activists from across Europe attended the conference. They emphasized that among the many issues the Baloch people face every day under Pakistani occupation, the most compelling ones are the enforced disappearance and fake encounters as a part of Islamabad's kill and dump policy. They blame Pakistan army has been committing genocide of innocent Baloch people, raising concern over several cases of extrajudicial killings and rapes. Pakistani army and other security forces of Pakistan has been carrying out uh, genocide of the Baloch people. But this problem of the Balochistan and the, this uh, great genocide of the Baloch people is not coming into the international media. Baloch Voice Association, a Paris-based NGO, also began a three-day poster protest in Geneva on Monday to highlight the rise in enforced disappearances in Balochistan, especially in the wake of CPEC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Here on these banners and posters, we have a data, we have some graphics, uh, we have uh, some photos of the people who were victims of enforced disappearances. As per the claims of the Pakistani state, as per the claims of the Pakistani army, that they are abandoning the issue of enforced disappearances. But contrary the data, the statistics which we have received from Vice for Baloch missing persons from the ground, which we have received from international organizations like COIED, that shows the, the number of issue of enforced dis disappearances has uh, increased, tripled than to the prior year. Activists blame Pakistan, along with China, has been unfairly exploiting Balochistan's rich gas and mineral resources under the gap of CPEC. The accused thousands have been killed or arbitrarily detained in the region for raising their voices against the atrocities and the CPEC. While well, in news from Afghanistan, a senior Taliban figure, Haji Bashir Nurzai, arrived in Kabul following his release after decades of detention by the United States in exchange for American engineer Mark Fredericks. An Afghan tribal leader, Nurzai, had been held on drugs charges in the U.S. since 2005. Taliban-linked Afghan tribal leader Bashir Nurzai arrived in Kabul on Monday after he was released from detention by the United States in exchange for American engineer Mark Fredericks. In an event attended by Noor Zai, Afghanistan's Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaki said, Fredericks, an engineer abducted in 2020 while working in Afghanistan, was exchanged at Kabul airport. Noor Zai and Muttaki both said they hope that this will help resolve problems between Afghanistan and the United States. This came after U.S. President Joe Biden granted clemency to Noor Zai, a convicted drug smuggler who had been detained since 2005. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken also hailed the move on Monday and said, there is no higher priority for Washington than bringing arbitrarily and unjustly detained Americans back home to freedom. U.S. officials had earlier said release of Fredericks would influence their view on the legitimacy of a Taliban-led government, which has not been recognized by any foreign government so far, in part due to the group's restriction of most secondary school-aged girls from education. And moving on, Sri Lanka's High Commissioner to India, Melinda Moragora, on Monday said the island nation is working on a framework for cooperation with India to avoid issues such as the docking of the Chinese research ship at its southern port. He said, we have learned the lesson that we need to have very close cooperation and coordination with India. 
Sri Lanka's High Commissioner Melinda Moragoda said on Monday that the island nation is working on a framework for cooperation with India to avoid issues like the docking of the Chinese research ship at the country's southern port last month, over which New Delhi raised security concerns. Moragoda said that the decision to allow the docking of the Chinese ship Yuan Wang 5 at the Hamman Tota port was taken in the chaotic time when former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa was fleeing the country and asserted that there was no political involvement in the decision. He said the lesson we have learned is that we need to have very close cooperation and coordination with India as New Delhi is the anchor for security in the region. We are looking at developing some kind of a framework with India so as to avoid this type of situation in the future. Because, I mean, clearly uh, we have to learn from each other as we go along. You said China. In the latest, on Tuesday, India said that it will keep supporting Sri Lanka mainly through long-term investments after giving nearly 4 billion US dollars of financial help this year. India has emerged as Sri Lanka's largest bilateral lender, surpassing China with a total of 968 million US dollars in loans in four months of 2022, reports suggest. The island nation is battling a severe economic crisis with food and fuel shortages affecting people across the country for the past several months. And after two decades of closing of the cinemas, a multi-screen cinema hall was inaugurated by a top Indian government official in Srinagar city of Jammu and Kashmir territory on Tuesday. Srinagar had over a dozen single-screen cinema halls operational until late 1990s, but they were forced to shut down after warnings from the terrorist groups. A multi-screen cinema hall was inaugurated by Mano Sinha, the Lieutenant Governor of India's Jammu and Kashmir in Srinagar city of the Union Territory on Tuesday and it will begin showing movies next month, more than two decades after cinemas were closed there. An Indian multiplex chain Inox is establishing the 520-seat hall with three screens in Srinagar that has been at the forefront of the insurrection by terrorists since 1989. Srinagar had over a dozen single-screen cinema halls operational until then, but a majority of them were forced to shut down after warnings from terrorists. The last cinema hall closed in 1999. Although after LG Saab, we will do special screening in Lal Singh Chadda. After that, I have to do proper trials for one week or eight days. We will have no glitches in the last minute. Earlier this week, two other cinema halls were also inaugurated in Shopia and Pulwama districts. The Kashmir Valley is one of the world's most militarized area and often witnesses conflict between terrorists and security forces. The government has been encouraging local and international companies to set up businesses there after the region was brought under direct federal rule in 2019. Well, a man in India's central indoor city has collected over 400 types of typewriters that type in different languages. The collection ranges from typewriters made from the year 1890 to 2020. In a bid to promote the usage of typewriters in an age of mobile phones and computers, a man in India's central indoor city has collected around 450 typewriters that type in different languages. Inspired by his father, who used to work for lawyers using typewriters, Rajesh Sharma developed a love for the machine at a young age. However, he started collecting typewriters when he realized they were disappearing from the country and started the Typewriter Museum about a decade ago. Sharma's collection ranges from typewriters made from the year 1890 to 2020. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Sangra और इस वक्त संग्रह के अंदर करीब 450 टाइपराइटर हैं और यह मैंने शुरुआत की थी चार पांच टाइपराइटर से और अपने भारत भारत सहित अमेरिका इंग्लैंड जर्मनी फ्रांस इटली इन देशों के टाइपराइटर हैं जापान और चाइना भी हैं उसमें the typewriter was first patented in 1868 and marketed and sold by the Remington Gun Company in 1874. They gained popularity in the early 20th century with production peaking in the mid-1970s. 
In the 1980s, word processors, typewriters with a memory card had a relatively brief run until they were eclipsed by personal computers with word processing software. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.